Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we'll be looking at a custom assembled upper that features a mid-weight hammer-forged chrome line barrel from Centurion Arms. The upper receiver was assembled during a SOTAR class by a subscriber of mine and then sent in for me to take a look at. I'm going to leave this upper assembled, but we'll take a look at a few things before heading to the range and seeing how it shoots. The barrel is 16 inches, cold hammer forged, with a chrome line chamber and bore, phosphate coated exterior, with a mid-length gas system, 556 NATO chamber, and 1 to 7 twist. A few other things to note about this barrel is that it has an alignment notch for use with Centurion Arms tabbed gas blocks. And Centurion also advertises that these barrels are high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. Next, we'll take a look at a few things during an inspection. Moving on to some numbers, the barrel's listed weight is 1 pound 15.9 ounces, and if we convert that to pounds per inch of barrel length, the Centurion lies pretty close to the middle of the barrels that I've done so far. So, it is indeed a mid-weight barrel. Centurion lists the gas port as 0.076 inches, and the subscriber used a pin gauge to measure the gas port and got 0.073 inches. Compared to the other 16-inch barrels with mid-length gas system that I've had so far, the gas port for this barrel is on the smaller side, which should make for a pleasant shooting experience, but may run into some issues with lower-powered ammo. Okay, next we'll take a peek at the inside of the barrel with my test long bore scope and see how things are looking. Also, I should note that the owner of the barrel had shot about 600 rounds through it before I received it. We'll start at the body of the chamber, and per usual, there's nothing much to look at here. The walls look pretty smooth, just some very light machining marks, but no significant defects that I see. Moving up to the throat, the start of the rifling looks a little bit uneven. So judging from that and the tool marks in the chamber body, I think that the chamber and throat were cut by reamer as opposed to being forged. Which is fine. There are plenty of cold hammer forged barrels that do that. Anyway, moving on to the rifling, there are some interesting radial marks here. And here's a straight view down the bore to get a look from a different angle. And these marks pretty much run all the way down the bore. The chrome had a few defects in it, nothing too huge or significant but there were a few blemishes at various spots in the barrel. Here's a look at the gas port, which doesn't seem to have anything out of the ordinary. Everything looks fine to me, but if we turn 180 degrees from the gas port, there looks to be some speckling or pitting of the chrome. You can see all those little black dots, and this isn't fouling. I cleaned the barrel afterwards and these marks didn't change at all, so this looks to be permanent. And it's just a bit odd, especially since it's on the opposite side of the gas port. Here's the crown, it also looks to have the same speckling in the chrome with all those black dots. The only two spots I saw the speckling was opposite of the gas port and the crown, so kind of strange. The owner of the upper thought that this might have been due to water sitting in the barrel. He had shot this upper in a bullet trap that used water and probably got some of that water in the barrel. But at least the machining on the leading edge of the crown looks pretty good. Anyway, we'll go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. The barrel was installed in a BCM upper and was bedded with Loctite 290. A BCM QRF handguard was installed with the barrel nut torqued to 45 foot-pounds. The upper was completed with a Centurion sand cutter bolt carrier group and a Griffin armament PSR OTB muzzle device. The rifle was shot from the prone position with a front rest and a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-0 buffer and Sprinco green spring. The two-stage trigger was provided by AR Gold. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before shooting the first group. Scope is a DNT Optics The One 7 35 by 56 and it's mounted in a reptilia mount that was supplied by Danger Space LLC. The mounting clamps were torqued to 45 inch pounds and rings to 15 inch pounds. Parallax was set appropriately. A Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite as well as a Shooter's Global SG Pulse were mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots. This simulates a match or other practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it and also gives us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was at a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Each 30 shot group took about 4 minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 25 seconds. I'll be shooting 3 groups through this upper. The first group we'll see is with Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Serial Match Kings. After that will be IMI Razor Core 77 grain. And last will be Winchester 55 grain M193. Alright, let's do it. Starting out with some premium grade ammo. The Federal Gold Medal 77 grain SMKs usually do pretty well for me. And they didn't disappoint here. 
when I do these evaluations, I normally shoot without a muzzle device, and this was the first time in a while that I shot a rifle with a brake on it. So, it was very pleasant feeling how soft this thing recoiled. Not that recoil from an AR-15 is harsh, but it was a nice change of pace. And since the recoil was so light, the Mantis actually didn't pick up any of the shots. So, that's both kind of neat and kind of annoying. Anyway, everything else went great. Shooting felt fine on my end. I felt like I shot to my normal shooting potential. Ejection looked great at right around 3.30 to 4 o'clock. Wind was calm. The Garmin recorded velocities from every shot. And we ended up with a really good looking group. So, we will finish up here and then take a closer look. Alright, so here's all my velocity data for the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grain Sear Match Kings, as sorted by barrel length. And if we narrow it down to just 16 inch barrels, we can see that the Centurion had the fastest velocity with the Federal by a fairly decent amount, with an average velocity of 2,507 feet per second. Here are all the standard deviations I recorded from this load, and the Centurion had an SD on the lower end at 18 feet per second. Looking at the individual velocity numbers, shot 3 was the fastest and shot 24 was the slowest. If we take a look at the group, it ended up being a little bit wider than it is tall, but still a really solid group without anything looking particularly out of place. Before going over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score for the new folks. AZ stands for A-Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where four times the mean radius would still fit into a USPSA A-Zone. The reason why I use this score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the numbers instead of looking at the raw mean radius numbers. And the Centurion ended up with a 30 shot group size of 1.556 MOA and a 30 shot mean radius of 0.401 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 352 yards. Or, if you want some more familiar numbers to look at, if we take the 30 shot group and break it down into three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was right at 1.0 MOA, and the average 10 shot group size was 1.3 MOA. Here is the leaderboard for Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Series Match Kings. I have 22 groups on here, and I've tried to keep things as consistent as I can between the different groups, given the time and budget that I have. But I'm human, and this is the real world, so things aren't exactly laboratory grade yet. Anyway, the Centurion comes in a very impressive fourth place out of 22 groups with this ammo. It's just a little bit behind the Unrivaled Barrel, which is also a chrome line barrel, and it beat the Hodge Cold Hammer Forge Barrel in fifth place by just a little bit. So yeah, a really solid start for the Centurion. Next up, we'll see how it does with the IMI Razor Core. Alright, second group we're looking at here is with IMI Razor Core 77 grain. This load usually puts out some pretty high velocity and muzzle energy numbers, although the groups are generally a little bit worse than the Federal Gold Medal. But this load is also a little bit less expensive. Shooting felt good again on my end. I don't think I pulled any of the shots. Shooting experience was good. Recoil was minimal and the bolt carry velocity felt fine. The bolt locked back on the last round like it should. Wind was calm. Ejection was at about 3.30, which is just a little bit farther forward than with the Federal. The recoil was too light for the Mantis to log any shots again, so no data there. But the SG Pulse Tracker is on the screen. The Garmin captured data on every shot, and that's about it. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Here's all my velocity data for the IMI Razor Core. And here are the IMI muzzle velocities for just 16 inch barrels. And again, the Centurion put up a pretty fast velocity for this ammo at 2,697 feet per second. So this barrel is getting some pretty high velocities compared to other 16 inch barrels. Moving on to the velocity standard deviations, the Centurion ended up pretty close to the middle for what I have recorded with the IMI Razor Core with an SD of 21 feet per second. Looking at the individual velocities, everything looks pretty normal. Nothing looks overly out of place. And looking over at the group, things look pretty well distributed, but that diagonal line at the top looks a little interesting. 30 shot group size came in at 1.994 MOA, and the 30 shot mean radius was 0.508 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 278 yards. And looking at the 10 shot breakdown, the first 10 shots ended up being a little bit wide, and then the next two 10 shot subgroups looked pretty solid. And we ended up with an average 10 shot group size of 1.6 MOA. Here's a look at the leaderboard for IMI Razor Core. Of course, keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter, so all these groups could probably be at least a little bit better. But anyway, the Centurion Midweight is in the number one spot on this one by a pretty decent amount, beating the Proof, LMT, and Noveski. So, a pretty impressive group with the IMI Razor Core. Next up, we'll see what it can do with some FMJ. 
All right, last group with the Spiral will be with Winchester M193, which is always interesting to watch to see what kind of shenanigans will happen. But spoiler, this one actually wasn't too bad. Anyway, for the new viewers, I like to include an FMJ load in these evaluations, especially for chrome-lined duty or combat-oriented barrels, since typically these types of barrels end up shooting a lot of this type of ammo instead of federal gold medal or some other type of premium stuff. But if you exclusively shoot 77 grain SMKs out of your chrome line barrel, more power to you. Anyway, shooting felt fine on my end. Recoil was minimal. Bolt carry velocity felt fine. Ejection pattern looked very consistent at about 330. Wind was pretty minimal. The Garmin picked up every shot. And yeah, everything went pretty smooth with this one. So we will finish up here and then take a closer look. All right, here's all my velocity data for the Winchester M193. And if we narrow this down to just 16 inch barrels, the Centurion is right in there with the rest of them, with an average muzzle velocity of 3,131 feet per second. And looking at the standard deviation for Winchester M193, the Centurion ended up a bit on the higher side with an SD of 32 feet per second. Looking at the individual shot data, shot 21 was particularly fast at 3,208 feet per second, which is 77 feet per second faster than the average. But other than that, nothing else really looked out of place. And looking at the group, it looks to be pretty evenly distributed. Although shot 25, out there on the high left, ended up being a little bit further away from the group compared to everything else. 30 shot group size came in at 4.072 MOA, with a 30 shot mean radius of 1.063 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 133 yards. And breaking things down into 10 shot groups, if we look at how the target progressed, the first 20 shots overlapped pretty well, and then the last 10 shots look to have shifted a little bit higher. But the 10 shot subgroups were all pretty similar in size to one another, between 2.7 MOA and 3.1 MOA, and we ended up with an average 10 shot group size of 3.0 MOA. And here's the leaderboard for Winchester M193, which isn't exactly the most impressive leaderboard, but this is what I got. Anyway, out of the 23 groups, the Centurion comes in a pretty decent 7th place. So, a pretty good showing with this ammo as well. Alright, that will do it for this one. I thought this barrel ended up shooting pretty good, although the chrome looked a bit interesting in a few spots. Anyway, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.